For the fourth time, the picturesque Trentino region in the Italian Dolomites hosts the Alpine Rock Fest, a sprint giant slalom extravaganza where some of the world's best skiers race in a winner-takes-it-all event for the largest winning cash prize of 75,000 euros. The initial idea of the Alpine Rock Fest was to, uh, to create a fun event, an exciting event, using the best gear in the world and, and in a very nice environment in the middle of the Dolomite. Well, the Alpine Rock Fest is an invitational race. All right, this is different than anything else going in Alpine racing, and it's geared towards the best guys. But, you know, it's also who they are, how fun they are, what they're doing, what the results, and we've been now four years proving that we can bring forward the best guys. The Alpine Rock Fest is really good for showing the sport in a different manner than just the normal Fist World Cups are. Very much a party atmosphere, you know, there's bands going off in the finish area. Um, you know, the, the finish area is kind of a party atmosphere as it is, and it's, uh, it's just kind of a more cool or laid back feeling than a normal World Cup. It's a completely different atmosphere. All the riders are in the same hotel, we eat there together in the evenings. We are all here to really have some fun, and there's a different format, a shorter course that takes 30 seconds. It's three or four runs for the victory, and it's the difference to the World Cup circuit. You need to make the sport more attractive for the young people. At home in the supermarket, it's mainly 50-year-olds who talk to me about skiing, and not so many young people. It's great that there are bands or other acts in between the runs, so it's a bit more entertaining and less boring. That's why I think the Alpine Rock Fest gets it right. There's a good prize money here, and it's a cool title to have. So. For that reason, it attracts the guys that are best at this stuff. So it's uh, it's always gonna always gonna be a tough title to take. La, last year was uh, amazing. Uh, uh, I surprised myself because uh, I I am not the favorite. I won last year, but I am not the favorite. That is, uh, <laughs> of course, the favorite. Uh, I go in the gate and I try to be my best. Uh, of course, there is Italian people, and I happy to be here to defend my my title. It's the night before the race. Media and fans come to watch 28 of the world's best alpine skiers from 10 countries as they gather for the bib draw. There are definitely a lot of top guys here. Ted Ligeti says it all. Bodie Miller, Simoncelli, Blardoni, there are definitely some good skiers here. I would love to win this again. This is a, it's a fun race to win and it's a fun, you know, awesome paycheck, great Christmas present. So it's something that I would really look forward to, to trying to win again. For me, I expect to beat Ted. I expect to beat Hersher. Um, just nobody else expects it. So I, I go out there tomorrow um, excited to show what, where I'm at because I think I am uh, I'm ready to win. It's race day at the Alpine Rock Fest and at the Athletes Hotel, Bodie Miller, Axel Svindahl and Ted Ligeti set off to make their way to the course, Alpine Rock Fest style. The atmosphere is considerably more relaxed than at the normal World Cup races. There's definitely a difference between Rockfest and a normal World Cup. Um, you know, you, of course it's competitive and we still want to win, but there's still not the, quite the same kind of intensity or nervous energy, I guess, that you'd have at a World Cup, but it's, uh, you know, we're still taking it seriously. We still want to win and ski fast. I think one of the things that's interesting about skiing is we don't actually compete against each other. I mean. Ted and I, we play some tennis against each other sometimes, and you, you actually looking across the net at the other person. You're manipulating where they're going, and you're you know, you're toying with them. In my case, um. <laughs> <laughs> we exchange a lot of uh, um, information. It's I, I would say skiing is like that mix of like a sport where you're part of a national team and a professional sport where you're part of your ski company, and um, it's. Uh, that's, I mean, that has to do with us, but it also has to do with our technicians, if they're friends and they trust each other. Ski racing only happens in the course of a minute or two, you know, so there's tons of time to hang out with everybody around, you know, the finish area in between runs, in the athlete lounges, on the lift rides, and training. So, you know, we spend a ton of time with our competitors, and 
it's just natural that we become friends, you know. It's race time at the Alpine Rock Fest. Defending champion Davide Simoncelli faces some of the biggest stars in alpine ski racing on his home terrain in Trentino. It's all or nothing on this steep and technical course. We have a 200 meter vertical drop for a sprint style GS with 24 gates and a 58% grade. This is a tricky course for these athletes as it's short, every mistake counts. It's about speed, full gas. For 35 seconds, you can't play around with trying to pace yourself, position your second run or third run start order. You have to go full gas. So we wanted to see people going as hard as they can. First up in the gate in the round of 15 is Axel Lund Svindahl, former world champion, Olympic champion. He takes to the steep course. He's aggressive. He knows he has to charge hard. No big mistakes for the strong Norwegian. Over the jump. Pushing for the line and sets the mark. It was all right, but there's guys out there that will be faster, so we'll see. Next up is Luca Dialaprandini, the winner of the morning's qualifying run. The young 23-year-old Italian is really charging. This kid has really got the moves. Second last year at the Rockfest, pushing hard for the finish line and steps into second place. In the start gate, Ted Ligeti, Mr. GS, definitely the man to beat. Charges in so smooth. Great snow contact. Gets pushed a little deep on the steep section. He's over the jump, making it look easy. But no, yes, he comes into first. Nice job. The course is a lot of fun, actually. Like, it's just so soft, but it's really easy to ski on, so it's a lot of fun. And the jump's awesome, so I was pretty happy with how I felt. Up next, defending Alpine Rockfest champion, Davide Simoncelli. The local guy is charging. The fans love him here. Can he do it again? Jumping around, losing some snow contact. That's going to cost him a little bit of time. He's over the jump. Pushing hard to make up for it. Oh, he's through in fourth position. Philip Shogo for of Austria is on course. Charging, working hard on the steeps. Can he do it? He's really putting his shoulders into it. He's leaning into every turn. Fifth position for the Austrian. Warm temperatures today have been making course conditions difficult, but Florian Isith is on course. The Italian is not disturbed by the course conditions. He really wants this race. Pushes hard over the jump, cuts the line off, maybe a little too much at the bottom. Sixth position. Cyprian Richard of France is in the start gate. He's the winner of the inaugural first Alpine Rock Fest in 09. Sweet memories of all that cash in the bank. Pushing hard, getting thrown around a little bit on the upper section. The bottom is where you can get it back. Will Cyprian do it? Seventh position. It's gonna be tight for Richard. Bodie Miller, the superstar from the US, is out of the start. His podium at the Beaver Creek World Cup shows that he's back and skiing fast and he wants this one bad. Pushing the line, charging at the top. He is really getting after it. And yes, in the lead. I'm excited, it's, it's, yeah, it's a great atmosphere. And I think it's really, yeah, it's built over the years, so it looks really awesome right now. A short prayer, and the GS specialist from Italy, Max Blardoni, takes to the course. He's been talking this one up. He really wants to put this money in the bank. He is pushing, he gets his line pushed a little bit off and low, but can he make up for it over the jump? Down through this easy flat section. No, eighth position for Max. Next up is Christoph Kreitzel from the Czech Republic. 
He qualified through the morning round. He's not a top 30 GS skier on the World Cup. He's the big underdog, showing if he can do it, and he is pushing, really going for it. Whoa, wow, he moves into six and does qualify. I'm happy because I was surprised because I made a mistake in the middle, so it's a perfect time for me. If you've been involved in ski sport as long as I have, you've seen the rise of free skiing, slope style, pipe and park. Now the Olympics are embracing this. Young people are out, they're charging in these new events. And alpine skiing's been going on forever. Ski Rays World Cup since 67. So we gotta get forward. We gotta jump in. We gotta like mix it up with these young, cool guys. Cause ski racing is exciting. It's the original extreme sport. It's extreme in terms of the demands on, on the human body. You're dealing with several thousand pounds of force in the turns, but you know there's you're so close to the limit. You're you know you're most of the time in the final rounds you're going to be way past the, the comfort zone and the limit. And that's coming from the best guys in the world. So it's uh it's as extreme as it gets. It's a great adrenaline rush. Before we ski a course like this, we've got a lot of training behind us, so we know what to do. And on those days, we reinvent ourselves. We ski with our hormones and our adrenaline, and simply can't think and must ski like an animal that needs to survive. If you have a good run, everything comes at you very quickly, and a lot of things just happen automatically. You just don't have the feeling that you need to push really hard, but it's still extremely fast, and that's what makes it exciting. The g-forces in the turns are enormous, and that's what makes skiing a pretty complex sport. Every day is different. Every day you have to find new material that suits the snow and the course. It's not just standing at the start gate, skiing past blue and red gates, and whoever is down the fastest wins. Yeah, when you're on course, you have to be right on the limit. That's really the goal. Your, you know, your hip is on the ground or a millimeter off the ground. Your hands dragging on the snow. You're, you know, going. 45 to 50 to maybe even 60 miles an hour times just trying to you know let my body react to what's happening and you know GS gates are coming at you every second basically so yeah it gets hectic at times especially if you're skiing really well you're skiing really fast and you know you're riding that edge you have no time really to make a mistake because you know you one little slip up and you're past the next gate. It's round two with 10 riders left in the competition. Only five of them will make the final, so the pressure is really on. Christoph Kreitzel is in the gate first. Each run is reverse order. He's in great form. You can see his confidence already from moving into this position and advancing with the best guys. He's making easy work of this floats the jump, pushes the bottom flats, and sets a nice pace. Next up is last year's champion, Davide Simoncelli, the policeman from Trentino. He really wants it again. Ooh, and he loses his outside ski just above the jump, coming out of the steeps. Can he make up for it in the flats? He's really charging, he's pushing, pushing. And yes, he moves into the lead. In this run, uh, I did uh, mistakes, but uh, I was fast. I am in the final. Yes, I, I'm uh, happy. I'm happy. We will see the next run. Twenty-three-year-old Luca Dialaprendini, the youngest competitor in the field. Very determined. He was second here last year and he won the qualifying run today. This kid has got tons of intensity. He's really, really pushing on the steeps. He clears the Audi jump. He's tucking it out through the easy flats. He wants this one. And through the finish line and into the lead. Axel Lund Svindal in the gate. The dominating, attacking Viking. 
He's been winning downhills left and right this year, and he's a hell of a GS skier. He's getting pushed around on the steeps, though, losing his line. Has to pitch the skis for control. Giving it all at the bottom, though. He wants this win. He's through, and yes, he makes the final. Now the pressure's on Mr. GS, Ted Ligeti. Clearly, by far, the best giant slalom skier in the world. He's off on the course, nice and smooth once again. Shaping the top of the turn. Just so much cleaner than everybody, but he gets pushed. He has a little mistake on the pitch. Pulls it right together though. Back to Mr. Smooth, Mr. Clean. Working hard, now he's making it look easy. Nice and smooth over the Audi jump. Ligeti cruises the bottom and pushes for the finish and into second and onto the finals. Nice to be in the final for sure and I felt like, yeah, I skied pretty well the whole way. And just had to look for a little more speed this next run. Cody Miller in the gate, running last, having won the previous round. Cody really wants this race. Showing strength and speed on the World Cup and GS back in his form. He missed the Rock Fest last year, so he's got everything to prove. And he is going for it, really pushing the line. Starting to cut things off. Oh, and he's on his inside skiing. That's gonna cost him his day. But, yeah, look at the 360 off the Audi jump. Bodie with a great show, but he does not make the finals this year. I was pushing hard. Just when I lost my ski there, it's one of those things that doesn't normally happen, but when it does, it's hard to recover. With the Olympic Winter Games in Sochi approaching fast, we met up with two previous American gold medalists, Ed Ligeti and Bodie Miller, and Olympic newcomer Fritz Dofer from Germany to hear their thoughts about the big event this winter. The Olympics are, of course, a big goal. It's uh, you know the premiere of any sport, really, and especially ski racing. And you know it's always cool to be part of such a such an event that's you know so much bigger than your sport and bigger than you. And uh, and it's yeah gives you that extra motivation for sure. Everyone has that like feels a little bit like a little kid where you you show up and you're like whoa this is a way bigger deal than a World Cup and even after the in the going into the fourth one it's a totally different feel than the other 400 and something World Cups that I've done. You go into those races and you feel the pressure. So it's really amazing to to sit here and to listen to to this to these guys when they when they talk about their experiences. So um, I'm really looking forward. It will be my first. Olympics, so yeah, I'm just excited. I like the approach to these, like an event like Rockfest and the Olympics, being that they're more, you, they're win focused, they're very pinnacle focused. You're going for the top of the podium. There's really no, nothing else to it. I guess you know every athlete wants to be the favorite because that means you've done you've done a lot of things right leading up to it. But yeah, that adds pressure for sure. And ski racing is a finicky sport where. You know, the best guy doesn't always win it. It's like you don't want the pressure of being Ted, where everyone thinks you're going to win the thing. You know, you don't want the inexperience of being Fritz. So I think I'm in perfect shape. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I think the inexperience actually works out well. I mean, I won my first gold medal, my first event, in my first Olympics, and you know, I was just in such awe. And like, I was like, whatever. I'm just like here for the cool experience. I'm just going to hammer as hard as I can, and you know, things aligned and things worked out, and I skied great. And I want a gold medal, and then you know, second time around, it's like I'm a defending gold medalist. <laughs> I better hammer down, like I better like perform. I'm first in the world in giant slalom, and then it's like <sighs> it's the grand finals of the 213 Alpine Rock Fest, and the crowd eagerly awaits their hometown heroes, Davide Simoncelli and Luca Diella Prandini. The question is if the big favorite Ted Ligeti can hold off all four challengers. First up is surprise finalist Christoph Kreisel from the Czech Republic. He really has nothing to lose and everything to prove against the best in the world in the sprint giant slalom. He's skiing fantastic with great confidence. He holds his line, no big mistakes yet. 
That's what this race is all about. You got to minimize mistakes and maximize intensity. The underdog is going for it. Over the Audi jump. No problem. Fantastic, and he sets the pace at 36.939. In the gate, the 31-year-old from Norway, Axel Svendal. Olympic champion, world champion, but not yet Alpine Rockfest champion. He's made the finals every year. He really wants to push for this one. Skiing well, but hopping around, throwing his skis, getting bounced by the deteriorating course conditions. Always solid, though, from the big man. He's holding it together, pushing for the Audi jump. He's over. Clean through the flats. Will he do it? No, he's in the second place. It's not all the money today for Mr. Spindle. The noise levels are cranking up here in Andalo for their local hero and last year's champion, Davide Simoncelli. He wants all the cash again this year. But you can't have any mistakes. It's all or nothing at the Alpine Rock Fest. Oh, and he's almost down, and that might cost him his money this year. Can he make up for it down here in the lower section? Lots of intensity pushing the line. Really going for speed over the jump. Here we have it, and... No, not this year for the champion of last year. The tension is rising. All the pressure is on the favorite. Ted Ligeti, Mr. GS, charges into the upper section. And I have to say, he is smoother than anyone today, but there can be no mistakes. Ted knows this better than most, because last year he pushed it and ended up going out and giving the cash to Davide Simoncelli. Can he hold it together this year? Oh, he is clean and strong and really digging deep. He's pulling it up another gear here for the finals at the Rockfest. And he's through the line and yes, he takes the lead. Ligeti, truly the best GS skier in the world, and his opponents give credit where credit is due. Now all the pressure rests on the last competitor, Luca Diella Prendini. Will there be another Italian upset this year at the Alpine Rock Fest? This youngster really wants it. He knows he's close. He was second last year, and he comes out with full intensity. He knows what he has to do. Oh, what a big mistake. Oh, he's got to really make up for a lot of time now. There can be no doubt he has to go 150%. Over the jump, will the youngster upset the superstar? Or will Ted take home his second rock fest? Oh! And yes, it's Ted Ligeti, who is the 2013 Alpine Rock Fest champion and ready to get super soaked by all his competitors and best friends. Final results, Ligeti just ahead of Alapandini, then Kreitzel, Svindal, and Simoncelli. Awesome job, let's give it up one more time. What a triumphant ending to a great day of GS racing in Trentino for Ted Ligeti, who adds yet another title to his growing collection of trophies. That's awesome to win here for sure. You know, it's awesome payday, but also, you know, it's a lot of fun to ski, and I was pushing hard. It was a nice little redemption after yesterday, not being able to take the Grand Riza, and to get the Rock Fest is an awesome feeling. Really cool Christmas present, so pretty psyched. What a great winner and what a spectacular day of racing in Andalo, where the celebration at the 213 Alpine Rock Fest is about to begin.